So five classes of giving. Uh, number one, number one we've mentioned already, and we're going to practice this next week. It's called first fruits. All right, first fruits. And I'll give them to you in summary now, and we'll go over each of them. Second class of giving is called the first tithe. Third class of giving is called the second tithe. Fourth class of giving, it's not complicated, it's called the third tithe. And the fifth class of giving is called the free will offering. All right, that's what we're going to cover today, mainly emphasizing on uh, the beginning part, the first fruits, but we'll cover all of these as well so that you understand what they're about. There's absolutely no question to people who read and follow the Bible that God has prescribed these classes of giving. Absolutely no question. Everybody understood this, but there was a debate. All right, let's talk about first fruits. First fruits is in Hebrew the teruma. All right, so the teruma is sometimes in English called a heave offering. All right, a heave offering, a uh, sweet smell unto the Lord, or a first fruit. What does the word heave mean? Heave is to lift up. All right, teruma means the, the offering that is lifted up and presented to the priests. The Bible does not prescribe how much to give as teruma. Hence, there was a debate. However, there was no debate by anybody in history as to the appropriateness of giving the teruma. Everybody agreed believers should give first fruits or teruma. But the thing they disagreed was they didn't know how much. And this was a debate because the Jews are very numerical, they're very calculative, they become good accountants. And so they debated for ages what's the exact amount for the teruma. Finally, in around 100 BC, in the first century before Jesus came, two of the most famous rabbis started two different schools. One was called uh, Shemai, the other one was called Hillel. So you'll hear about the Hillel house and the, the Shemai house. These were the two different schools of thought that were led by two of the most famous rabbis before Jesus came. And so Hillel and Shemai had a debate. What is the appropriate amount for the teruma? Now Shemai says you can give one sixtieth of your income as teruma. Hillel says, no, that's too stingy. You should give one fortieth of your income. One out of 40 weeks of pay should be your teruma. Consider your first fruit offering to be given to the priests. Very important, to the priests. Personally to the priests. Not for the temple, not to the workers in the temple. This was a gift to the priests, given as unto God. And so some people, of course, you know, they're going to take the middle road. And so they say, well, we can't settle it, so let's just do 1 50th. Okay? This was called the middle way, the middle offering. This was called the good eye. And guess what? The one who would only give 1 60th of his income as Teruma was said to have evil eye. And this one had the good eye. And so they debated this on and on and no one could settle it. Some people say, well, we don't need to talk about the Teruma because Jesus never talked about it. But actually, it's in one of his most famous sermons. And the verses before and the verses after, we all know, we all quote. Jesus actually comes along and he settles the debate between Shemai and Hillel. And here's what Jesus said to all the Jews who knew about this debate, whether we have an evil eye or a good eye or kind of an average eye. Jesus said, the lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, in other words, if you give 
one fortieth of your income as teruma, if you are the generous person who gives a teruma, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is evil, that is, you're stingy, and you give only one sixtieth of your income as teruma, then your whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? The stingy person is not eligible for revelation from God. The generous person always gets more. And you find this teaching over and over in the Bible. And it makes people's head go tilt. Even the disciples, they, they couldn't believe the generosity that Jesus expected from his disciples. They didn't understand that. Jesus would say that to him who has much, more will be given. But to him who has little, even the little he has, will be taken away from him. In fact, to the Jews, the sign that you are saved is that you are generous. This was something that was understood that when you become a person of God, you become a generous person. So the question is, can you be a Christian and be stingy? It's an oxymoron. You know what oxymoron is? An oxymoron is when you take two terms that are contradictory and you combine them. There was never a debate whether the teruma should be given. Everybody believed you should give your first fruit, which is not the tithe. You should give the first of your income to the Lord. But we're debating how generous we should be. Now, we have, by the leading of the Holy Spirit for years, and I'll be honest with you, I did not fully understand this teaching. And this is the beauty of being a Christian is you sometimes don't fully understand something in the Bible, but because your heart is right, but because you love God, but because you surrender to the Holy Spirit and let Him speak to you, you end up doing the right thing without knowing. Have you ever done that? You knew something in the Bible before you knew it was in the Bible. Have you ever done that? It happens all the time. That's the advantage of being a born-again Christian. You have the Holy Spirit inside. And so for years, what did we say? Every beginning of the financial year, we're going to give one week's paycheck unto God. What does one week's paycheck calculate to? Help me. One out of 52. We were just a little on the stingy side, but not bad. I thank God for the Holy Spirit. Even if we didn't know Judaism, even if we didn't know the Jewish encyclopedia of Jewish culture, yet we have the Holy Spirit. And He has led us every time in the right way. And so we told you we should give the first. Now we pick arbitrarily. I will say to you, arbitrarily, we pick the beginning of August because the end of the financial year comes in uh, June. I give you... Um, July to kind of sort out your finances, make sure you get your financial house in order, know what your taxes and everything uh, are, but then make sure you start the financial year symbolically with the teruma. Give the best, the first to God because he will honor this and Jesus says if you have a good eye, the rest of you will be full of light. So what a great way to start the year. Now some of you aren't with us in August. Some of you don't have the financial year starting in the same time as the Australian financial year. doesn't matter. Maybe you start a new job. Give the first paycheck to God. Maybe you've rented a house for the first time. Give that first rental income to God. Whatever it is that has become a first gain, a first blessing, give that to God.